One of the least used letters in the English alphabet, now a symbol of a fringe conspiracy theory. Its origins lie in the dark web, but it's crept to mainstream platforms. Once there, it was embraced mainly by people on the far right of the political spectrum and picked up by Republican politicians, some who now sit in the halls of Congress. You likely know QAnon's history, but within the shadows of the conspiracy is real pain to those who believe and to those who witness. My life as I know it has been burnt to the ground. Families torn apart. The moment I really decided to cut ties, and that was the insurrection. And we examine why it's easier to fall into than you might think. These QAnon type things provide a very easy and appealing answer to a lot of really complicated things. Shedding truth and light into the dark corners of conspiracy. You're watching Local 5 News. Well, tonight we are taking a deep look at conspiracy theories, misinformation, disinformation. We know they can all undermine our political process, but what we are also learning is they can ruin personal relationships, as told through the stories of two women whose names we have changed who are living in fear. Hello? Hi there, this is Eva. Hi. Hi, how, how are, are you? you? Okay, I just, before we get started, I just want to make sure I'm really, really want to make sure, like, my identity doesn't get out, whatever you decide to, to do with this information. So, um. The fear Caroline lives with as the wife of a QAnon follower is enough to make the mother hide her identity. I'm trying to protect my kids as much as possible. It's the same protection 21-year-old May is seeking. They have a strong platform and we keep growing. From the group her mother has succumbed to. She tried to call me four times today and I didn't answer because I just didn't want to hear any of it. Q has destroyed my life. My life as I know it has been burnt to the ground. QAnon, the common thread tying these two Midwestern women who've never met together. More specifically, what Caroline and May have in common are loved ones whose quest for answers to some of life's complications took a wrong turn. And when bad actors online fed them a series of false information, it cost these two women their relationships and their sense of personal safety. I live with someone who hates me, who I live in fear of, all because of them, the cues and the people who allow the cues to breathe. So what is QAnon and why do its followers, known as Qs, believe it? In short, QAnon is a conspiracy theory that originated on the anonymous website called 4chan and came into the mainstream media in 2018. But we'll get more into its origin later. For now, we'll focus on what its followers believe, which at the surface can sound genuine. They position themselves as wanting to save the children from sex trafficking. But the explanation they provide as to why sex trafficking exists is false and harmful, detracting from the real problem. Take a listen to what May's mom told her. She had said, well, there are these high level people in the government and they go by the name Q. And Q is, it's not one person, it's a group of people who are insiders, they, they have all these, these information about all the, the child sex trafficking rings. The theory itself is political, alleging celebrities and high ranking Democrats worship Satan, run a sex trafficking ring, and plot against Donald Trump. She would tell me, you would not believe all the celebrities on this list that are pedophiles. And she would say this out in public too, to like random people. The followers believe Donald Trump is on a mission to put an end to the alleged sex trafficking ring and will soon do it in a public way. Q telling followers to watch and see it play out. The global elite will be taken down soon. They've been collecting all the gold, not only for physical control, but also for something unimaginable. Normies won't understand. You were watching a scripted movie. A phrase often echoed by followers on Facebook. Q says today is going to be a movie. Some big plan happens today. Q is a psyop on National Popcorn Day. For some, it becomes an obsession, glued to their computers, phones. Stays up and down on his phone, like during the day when he's at work. Constant, constant. Crystallizing the conspiracy. He, he truly believes that any other Democrat or anyone who challenges his belief set is a pedophile. 
transcending political division. I've become the enemy, so I have to be very careful. Caroline learned it's no longer safe to speak up. I mean, at first I was furious because it makes no sense. So I would fight back pretty fiery. But the more she fought back, the more he'd send her cues, propaganda, links, videos. This is our duty to God and country. The true warriors for freedom never give up the fight. May's mom in deep, too, sending invites to apps that would let this false information live. I remember her sending me an invite to Parlor. A flurry of misinformation. Q coercing followers to believe that radical things would happen on certain dates, like COVID ending on election day or Biden getting arrested before he takes office, neither of which happened. But that doesn't stop Q from stringing people along and the followers hanging on, which is frustrating to their families. I confronted her and said, what the hell are you doing? You have a daughter at home who needs you. You have a family to take care of and you're over here living in a dreamland of conspiracies. For months, May's mom shut her down. In December, buying a one-way ticket to Utah to go to a doomsday shelter. She bought a one-way ticket there and she had said to me on like Christmas, I'm just gonna go, I'm not gonna come back, you know? <laughs> the same time, Caroline remaining the subject of her husband's rage for not buying in. It's the anger that he's focused on me for not believing it. So I decided to just keep my head down and try to avoid his wrath. Had you ever, up until this point in your marriage, felt scared of him in that way? No. That's why it's so hard reconciling what my life's become. Then, when they didn't think it could get any worse, the insurrection. Many spearheading the riots, doing it in the name of Q. Doug Jensen from Des Moines wearing a QAnon t-shirt in the Capitol, seen on a video taken by a reporter chasing a police officer up the stairs. May was shocked. I remember texting her like, what the hell is going on? And she just, she didn't respond all day. She didn't respond to a single thing I sent her even days afterwards. Caroline's husband acted unusual too. He's been more subdued ever since the sixth. I don't know what that means. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. January 20th came and went. Biden was inaugurated, but Q had told followers Biden was going to be arrested on live TV at his inauguration and Trump would reveal himself as the president and declare martial law. When that didn't happen, many broke apart from the conspiracy, but those who remain are intense. Only those of spiritual commitment and determination are qualified for the next phase of this operation, which is to expose- Moving the goalposts once more, this time to March, the remaining Q followers now think Trump will reveal himself on that date. Defend our civil rights against the- derange. Among the followers who stayed, May's mom, Caroline's husband. Their loved ones still glued to the internet, but now Caroline and May are turning there too, a group on the website Reddit called QAnon Casualties, where tens of thousands of members share similar pain. I felt so much relief knowing that other people were struggling with the same thing that I was because mentally it's really hard to wrap your head around when your parent who you think is the smartest person in the world as a kid is not being, you know, the person you want to look up to. Hanging on to little hope. What is your hope for your marriage? I don't have any right now. I'm just trying to survive. Like my future is empty, whatever it may be. Neither side is appealing. Single mom divorced or in this marriage, my life as I know it has been burnt to the ground. Both women hope sharing their pain might help someone else. I want people to be aware of the pain and absolute trauma and torment it causes. And if there are people out there who this might prompt them to do something about it, that's what I'm hoping to accomplish. Wow, powerful stories and even my heart just breaks for these women. So, you know, what's next for Caroline and May? It is heartbreaking. It, it was very emotional interviewing them. Both women say they're in intense therapy to deal with this stress that this brings to their lives. Caroline says she's really just trying to take things one day at a time, especially because she still lives with her husband, who she says is absent from her kids now. She does plan on filing for a divorce. May, who doesn't live with her mom, she's 21, 
She wrote her mom a letter saying, until you're able to come back to reality, you're not welcome in my life. She doesn't know if she plans on sending that, but she said that and the support group on Reddit really helped her just writing it and talking it all out. Stephanie. Sure, sure. How about warning signs? Anything that the rest of us should really be watching out for? That's such a good question, and it has a complicated answer. For example, May was wondering how this happened to her mom, who is college educated. She said otherwise, she's really smart. A psychologist tells me while certain people are more vulnerable, it boils down to having a grievance or major stress. And for a lot of people, it is not having their candidate win, also magnified by the pandemic. Trying to understand why the world is so uncertain right? Why there is so much um, um, sexual slavery, slavery and child trafficking and various other things. These QAnon type things, even though are completely nonsensical for proper examination, provide a very easy and appealing answer to a lot of really complicated things. And what he just said there echoed by the research of another journalist for Vox, Aja Romano, who researched QAnon extensively. She broke it up into three purposes, which I think are really helpful. Three reasons people believe QAnon. One, it serves as a framework to make sense of the problem or grievance they have in their life. Two, a distraction from the grievance by looking at all those links and videos. And three, it's a community of like-minded people who share that same grievance, which right now, during political division, a lot of people do. Certainly, I think a lot of us can relate in one way or another to what we're seeing and hearing, Eva. Thank you very much.